today is December the 27th. It's a Monday. And I have an update and a half for you guys. Um, I recorded the end of last the last vlog happened on Christmas morning. I woke up at six o'clock on Christmas morning. I got up, I took my pain medication and everything like that and got the last part of the vlog edited and the video made and put up and ready. Or no, yeah, it was Christmas morning on the Saturday. So anyway, later on, um, a few hours later, I'd looked at my drain and noticed that there were like a lot of like lumps, like very like lumpy and chunky. So I phoned up the um the breast part of the, the breast clinic in the hospital um, where they do the operations and stuff. They gave me their number in case, you know, anything was up. So I phoned them and told them about what it was and they told me I needed to go to A&E. So that's, if you're American or in any other part of the world, A&E is accident and emergency. It's part of the hospital. Um, so I got myself together and we went up there. Um, they took all, like, they done a lot of blood tests. My hand is, like, battered and bruised um, because they couldn't get any veins anywhere else and they obviously can't use this side because I can't have blood or blood pressure, anything from that side ever again because I've no lymph nodes there now. They managed to get blood after nearly an hour of trying to get it. Um, and they said that my inflammation was quite high, but that was to be expected. Um, but they didn't think it was an infection or anything like that. But during this time, I was at the hospital for five hours. Um, my pain got to the point, like, it was unmanageable. It was so, so bad. Um, so they gave me, while I was there, um, two cocodamol whenever I got there, which didn't do anything. Then they gave me oral morphine, which did help. And then... They gave me um, Shortec, which is oxycodone. Um, they gave me 10, 10 milliliters of that orally. And then um, they gave me to take home with me. They gave me six tablets of oxycodone that were five milligram. So, um, and I had to take those 12, one 12 hours apart. So like... Take one in the morning and one at night, 12 hours apart. Um, I came home and, you know, because they give me the morphine and like a whole hope of, like a whole host of stuff in hospital, I was all right. It was still sore, like, but I was all right. I was managing. Um, Then that was all Christmas Day. Then um, yesterday was Boxing Day and my mum and dad came up for their dinner now that they, they had wanted to do Christmas and I they'd said to come for us to go to them and I'm like no I don't want to I want to stay in my own house I like trying to like I like making Christmas dinner and everything um but my mom and dad ended up coming up early and my mom helped Chris with the cooking and everything and yesterday I just basically sat we have an electric recliner in our living room, so I basically sat on that for the vast majority of the day. I was completely exhausted, but because I wasn't moving very much, my pain was controllable. Now, last night, they went home at about half six, and then I come up afterwards and just lay on the bed. I think it was about 12 o'clock before I was going to sleep, and I was exhausted. I slept to like half twelve this afternoon but because I have this drain and everything still in me whenever I try to I can't whenever I'm in bed I'm lying on my back I'm a side sleeper but I obviously can't sleep on my side um I lie on my back and then I have pillows down each side of my legs to stop me you know rolling about in my sleep so that I'm just lying on my back but see, for like 12 hours of lying on my back, whenever I tried to get up, I was just, everything was stiff and sore. And then whenever I eventually did get onto my feet, I just burst into tears because the pain in my side is unbelievable. Um, I can't feel anything in my armpit where they've taken the 
lymph nodes out. It's completely numb. There's no sensation there at all. But the whole way down my rib cage and the wound that is in my armpit is just so unbearably sore. It's mental. So I stood crying my eyes out whenever I get up because of it. And I have a really high pain threshold. I can take a lot of pain before, you know, I start complaining about it. But this was just uncontrollable. So I phoned the emergency doctor. Um, because I, and I explained I don't want to have to go back to A&E and sit there for... It's not A&E's fault. It's this, um, not, none of this that I'm saying is anything against any of the doctors or the hospital or anything like that it's just with so many people coming in and you know like car crashes and things that are happening they obviously have to prioritize people you know might have had a heart attack and stuff so you can be sitting in a and a on these really rock solid chairs like i had to on christmas day for five hours i can't do that i'm too painful it's too sore um so I phoned the emergency doctor and he said that the oxycodone that they had gave me, like th they should have started me off at 10 milligram rather than 5. So he was doubling it and to take two of them. And this is on top of the cocodamol that they've gave me as well. So I took two of those and the pain now, I can still feel it. I'm still very tender, but it's under control. I'm not, you know, at my wit's end, like needing to cry um he said to me as well on the phone to just do not worry about any if what he gives me doesn't work then to phone back again and he will sort everything out over the phone with me and leave um, medication at the pharmacy and stuff so that I'm not having to wait about or sit anywhere or wait to be seen everything would be done really quick obviously this is a emergency doctor in an emergency line that I phoned and I know that I can't because you don't want to hold that phone line up for anyone but I wish I could phone him back and thank him because it's the only thing that's gave me any kind of relief um just so bad again it's okay now it's bearable um I still have the drain and everything in it won't be coming out till Wednesday but I'm losing a lot of fluid through it. Um, between going to bed last night, I checked the bottle, and waking it up today, I'd lost fifty mil of fluid. Um, through it, and it's starting to get heavy. They did give me another bottle, and they taught me how to change it and stuff, because obviously, when if the if this fills up, I need to change it. But they also said if it just starts getting too heavy on me. Then to change it but I'll just leave it for the meantime because I don't want to fiddle about with stuff and anything go wrong because then I will need to go to the hospital for it. It's just a bit heavy at the minute. Um, Whenever you go in to have lymph nodes removed they give you exercises to do um, after your surgery because they don't want your shoulder to freeze up which can happen and also fluid to gather in your arm. I, I'm sitting with like the, them right beside me I can do all of the exercises and put my arm behind my back that's about as far as I can get my arm up and this is went with painkillers but all down here is aching but the pain just in it's not compared to every, all the other pain I'm in it's nothing but my shoulder and across my back is very sore um I, Chris has been helping me to get washed at night um, because I can't see around this drain well enough because my boob has swollen out and everything so much and last night whenever he was like he's not putting any kind of pressure on but between the scar under my arm and where my boob starts he grazed past that and I nearly stuck to the ceiling it was so unbelievably painful um progressively as the days have went on like I didn't have really much pain in my boob where the operated I had a lot of like burning but that's fluid 
and the um the surgeon explained to me that they don't drain fluid from your actual boob. It's the lymph nodes they'll drain from because fluid gathering in your boob can help to keep the shape of your boob. So it and it's not gonna cause any like danger or anything like that. But if like a lot of like swelling at each side, um and like a real strong burning sensation. Now it's not hot to the touch, it's not infection, it's just the fluid gathering that's doing that. Um I have more photos which I'll insert now. Um so if you don't want to see them, obviously scroll on past where this is. Um I'll put two pictures up, one of my boob and then one of what I'm looking like under my arm. My boob is getting quite sore and tender today. You can't really see in the photograph because of the lighting in the bathroom, the bruising, but I'm getting a lot of brown, heavy brown bruising all like underneath my boob and coming around the side. Again, you just can't see it that well in the photo, but it is there. And but the bruising around the drain and stuff is much much worse. It's like navy and black. I'm just. <sighs> I didn't expect the pain to be as bad as it is. Like as you guys know, I've explained to you. Like the worst part of all of the treatment that I have to face in my mind was the surgery because I was so scared of the anesthetic. And I think that I spent too much time thinking about that rather than how to cope with the pain afterwards. I didn't expect the pain to be as bad as it is. If I'm sitting completely still or lying, you know, in one position, doesn't bother me at all. The slightest movement I make, it's agony. Um, But... I can't, there's no part of my body that I can move without it affecting this side because obviously it's connected to your ribcage and all that's connected to your spine. Your spine moves every time you move a limb. So I'm finding the best thing to do is just to just sit still. Again, after the doctor today has upped the oxycodone to 10 milligram, I've just had such relief and I have to take my cocodamol every four hours as well but it's given me relief I don't expect anything that they give me that's it's nothing's going to take the pain away completely but as long as it's manageable and it's not it doesn't have me at my wits end then I can cope you know I can still feel it now it's still sore but it's not how it was so that's good enough for me I'm hoping that maybe um whenever the drain comes out it'll make things easier I just, I don't know. I've never been through anything like this before, so I don't know what to expect. But that happens on Wednesday anyway. Um, The drain is stitched in, so I'm ex expecting for that to be quite painful whenever it comes out. But I can deal with that if it means that when it's out, then I'm not in as much pain. Um, So that's basically where I am at the minute. It's just been a, like a an awful few days on Christmas night when Chris was helping me get washed. I was in floods of tears and it was like it was a mixture of all of the pain that I was feeling but then a lot of like emotional pain. Um, when Chris's dad was went into the hospice. Chris's dad found out that he had cancer in June and was given three months to live and he, he passed away on the 21st of September that year so we had exactly three months but whenever his dad went into the hospice he couldn't really manage to eat and stuff very well by himself and Chris had to sit and feed him and it was heartbreaking to watch and whenever whenever he was helping me get washed on Christmas night I just kept thinking how much can this man take you know first his dad and now his wife
it's just so unfair on him. He's had so much to deal with over this past few years. And he's been amazing. If it wasn't for him, like, I don't know what it would do. He's been doing everything. Like, everything. And it's just like, he can't even catch a break. Because he's still grieving for his dad. And now he gets hit with this on top of everything. Just not fair. I just feel so guilty of what... What I'm putting him through again, you know? I don't know, it's not, you know, like... I asked for this or I planned for it. It's just one of those things that happened, but it's just so unfair. <sighs> I just like the whole thing as well with like all like this surgeries that I've been through and stuff. He just seemed to be fine one minute and then not the next. Like I woke up on Christmas morning, as I said at the beginning of this vlog. <laughs> Get up updated everybody, inserted pictures, got the video together, got it all ready to go up. And then within a couple of hours, everything was different. I think that just anesthetic and all the different meds and stuff that, that gave me before I woke up from my surgery because the last time it went under general anaesthetic, I woke up and I was really, really sick. So they had given me like anti-sickness stuff that gave me morphine, that gave me a lot of stuff before I even woke up from the anaesthetic. And I think it just took some time for everything to wear off. And it just all hit and then having to sit in the hospital for so long and just get progressively worse and worse. It was just horrible. But... At least the surgery bit's over me now and all I can... They've already told me I might need a second surgery if the margins around the tumour aren't clear. I feel like I'll be able to... If that's the case, I pray to God that it's not, but if that's the case, I'll be alright because it'll be my boobs will be going back into rather than under my arm. And as I say, like the, the pain from my boob is nowhere near as bad than the pain that I'm getting all down my side and I think it's just they've either hit nerves or cut nerves or something's happened to my nerves it's nothing to do like this is all part and parcel of the, the surgery that I'm having it's nothing to do with the doctors or the surgeons or anything they've done the best possible job that they can it's just one of the things that you have to deal with whenever having surgery to remove lymph nodes so I reckon that if I do you have to go back in if the margins aren't clear and I do have to go in and get more out, I'll be okay with it because that's not, my boob isn't where the pain is centralised. So yeah, I might be, um, I don't know, how, like my vlog and everything for this week, everything's always, no matter what happens, will always go up at six o'clock on a Sunday UK time. It's just how much I'm able to record between like now and then. I just need to take it day by day because the pain and stuff. I'm hoping now with these, like that oxycodone being upped, the pain now will be manageable, but I know that it's going to be in waves as things are wearing off and I'm having to take another dose and stuff like that. I just don't know when I'm going to be able to get up and sit. I'm going to try my very best just to rest. Chris had said to me whenever I come home, it was actually whenever we were sitting in hospital on Christmas Day. I got home at three o'clock on Christmas Eve in the afternoon. He's like, for someone that's just had surgery, you are doing far too much. You're standing up and walking about and everything too much. And looking back on it, I shouldn't have been doing what I was doing. And it wasn't even like I was doing that much, you know. I was getting up and walking out and like doing the exercises and stuff like that. I didn't realise I was meant to leave it to the next day. I'm like, look, I'm totally fine. I, I wasn't, it just was in the post. But I'll be trying to update as much as I possibly can. And obviously show progression pictures and things like that throughout. Just in case you yourself are having to have these operations so that you know what it's going to look like and what to expect and all that kind of stuff. 
um again these vlogs are i'm trying to be as educational and informative as i can and to me just describing things isn't enough whenever it comes to cancer you need to see what i'm able to show obviously whenever the dressings and stuff come off from my breast i can't post that unless i like blur the nipple and stuff out because even though this is about cancer and stuff i don't think youtube would be good with a woman's boob just sitting there even though it should be totally fine it's cancer it's not like i'm getting my boobs out for you know views it's to let you see scarring and stuff like that and incisions and everything else but um i think that's that's all really i have to say for today um again if anyone has any questions just ask in the comments i'll answer everything to the best of my ability if you've any advice also give that and thank you for all of the comments and stuff I'm not going to lie, I haven't had a chance to read the comments um, from the vlog that went up on Sunday, yesterday. Um, I've just been in far too much pain. This is the first I've sat at the computer to do anything. I've either been sitting in a chair or lying in bed. Um, but I will get reading comments and thank you for taking the time to write them. It means the world to me. But... Right, I'm going to let this go now because I'm starting to just ramble nonsense. <laughs> but um, thank you again for watching and I will talk to you in the next vlog, which will be instant for you guys, but it might take a day or so for me. So take care and I will talk to you again soon. So today is... God, what day is it? Thursday the 30th of December. Um... It's been a few days since I updated last, um, and I've like a whole host of stuff to talk about today. Um, I've actually got talking points written down in front of me because I'll forget otherwise. Um, so first thing is yesterday I went to have my drain removed and I was like quite nervous about it um, because I obviously know, you know, having that out something that's stitched into your body is not going to be a walk through the daisies um i was actually pleasantly surprised the drain removal itself wasn't sore um it just felt like a weird sensation of something being pulled out from inside but without any pain but the painful part was whenever they were taken off the dressings that surrounded the drain um it felt like my flesh was being peeled from the bone it was so painful and um my nurse had said to me whenever she was doing you know it's okay to swear and i didn't <coughs> excuse me i didn't swear but i felt like it it was awful um but at least the drain's gone now so once the drain went um it just felt great to have a wee bit more movement and stuff back without being concerned about you know pulling on the the tube or and having to carry this heavy drain about and stuff with me now whenever i was in they did give me a spare drain bottle and told me how to change it but i think i'd lost from the drain being put in on christmas eve until yesterday i think it was about 250 milliliters of fluid um so it was quite heavy and i didn't want to change it just in case i messed anything up um so i left it as is um, whenever the drain came out, I felt a hole in my body. Like I could feel air touching around the edges of it, which was weird. And then I could feel obviously like there was fluid that had um came out of it and I could feel it running down my side. Um, which again was strange sensation, but not bad at all. But yeah, I'm glad to have that out anyway. Um last night whenever I went to sleep I was still sore and everything like I'm it feels like day by day I'm getting progressively sore each day rather than better um but at least last night I didn't have to spend the entire night sleeping on my back um I'd said to you guys before that I'd been like propping pillows around my legs to stop me you know turning in the night 
and then leaving the drain tube hanging out the side of the bed just I was scared of moving and whatnot and you know knocking it or anything like that my phone is so rude um but yeah lying on my back constantly all night long it was hurting my neck and my shoulders and everything I was just like really really stiff with it all so at least last night I could lie on the opposite side I could move about as you know as freely as I could pain permitting um but at least that's something you know um my GP actually phoned me it would have been whenever surgery had closed last night um must have been whenever he had just finished he phoned me just to see how I was doing which was really really nice of him um he also words come to me uh he also prescribed um more oxycodone um strong ones and weaker ones I have to take um the stronger ones one in the morning and one at night and then the um the weaker ones that he gave me just to take whenever you know the pain bites through during the day um he had said that he didn't understand why the hospital had sent me home with such not weak but weak pain medication for what the pain I would have been dealing with um they had sent me home with cocodamol 3500s which is like 30 milligrams of codeine and 500 of paracetamol in one tablet now to me that is like rocket fuel you know what I mean um but apparently that is not anywhere near enough um not anywhere near enough for the pain that I was dealing with so whenever he had said this to me it made me feel better because I had just felt like such a weakling I'm like why am I crying with this pain like these painkillers should be enough but apparently they're not and like I should have been feeling the way that I was feeling basically um I didn't realize that the surgery that I had had is classified as major surgery I thought major surgery was um like the kind of surgery that I was meant to go for um, with my stomach problems where they basically open you right up like it would have been sternum to belly button I was being opened for that but I didn't get it in the end so that's what I thought major surgery was but he said no the surgery that I've had is major surgery um, and there has been someone inside me working about with a knife so it's going to be very sore so he sorted me out with a week's worth of that medication and then I'll just see how I am at um, like you know whenever that runs out and then we can discuss further what I need but honestly like I want to not be taking a, like medication as soon as possible you know like I need to be I don't think that like taking a load of medication and stuff isn't going to put your body in the best position that it could be for chemotherapy and I need to be really fighting fit for that Um, but I'm just at the minute I'm just trying to like deal with the pain um that's why I haven't actually updated in a few days because I've just been so sore um and so tired um I don't know whether it's the surgery and the recovery or the medication or all of it combined but I am just so unbelievably tired so I've just been like I've been keeping my keeping my feet up lying in bed I have been get, getting up and about and doing the exercises and stuff that they tell you to do and trying to like shuffle around the house and stuff but for the vast majority of it I'm just letting myself rest because I'm exhausted I am so tired that you wouldn't believe um it's been a lot um today pain wise um my mom actually came up well, hold on a minute before I tell you that. I'll tell you this. Last night, um, whenever I was on the phone to the doctor, um, I'd asked when I should be changing dressings and stuff because the dressings weren't changed whenever I went to have my drain removed and I haven't been given any instructions as to when I'm meant to be changing them. So he said every two to three days. So, like, I, I thought to myself, right, well, I better change this, like, these dressings tonight, last night this is. So I done the one on my boob and it was 
really painful. Um, not so much around the top, which is weird. Not so much around the top where I've been cut open. But underneath and at the side, it, whenever I was taking the dressing off, even though I was taking the tension off my skin, it was still pulling on my side and it was crazy painful. So as soon as I got that one off, put a fresh one on, I was like, right, I'm done for the night. No more. Um, That's enough of that. Um, My doctor also was nice enough to say that if I couldn't manage um changing dressings and stuff by myself, just to phone him and he would have the nurses do it for me. Um which is really nice of him, but I wanted to try and get it done myself. So my mum came around today. Um, she had went down and picked up the medication that the doctor prescribed yesterday. Um, and then when she was here, I asked her whether she could help me attempt to change the, the dressing underneath my arm. Um, whenever I had the drain taken out, and a dressing put on in that site that overlapped it with the the dressing that's over the scar in my armpit. I'll insert a picture now so you know what I'm talking about. Um, You'll be able to see the dressings overlapping. So whenever I was taking the one off from under my arm, it was sore to a point. But I'm very numb. Well, I was completely numb in my armpit. But the feeling's starting to come back here and there. So whenever we were taking that dressing off, um, I had to actually stop and like cut it so I wasn't pulling the fresh dress dressing off from the drain removal yesterday. Um since I've changed that dressing, I have been sore. There's feeling starting to come back in places in my armpit that feels like someone has just spent the night punching me over and over and over again. Um, I still have a lot of pain going down my side. Um, I'll insert a picture now. I took a photo of whenever the dressing came off to see what the scar under my arm was going to be like. And it's big. It stretches from like almost the front of my chest, almost the whole way around to the back. Um, it's not, obviously you can see from the picture yourself. Um, I didn't have the presence of mind last night to take a photograph of the wound on my boob because I was in so much pain with it. I was just like, I was trembling and everything. It was sore. Today I had, like, I already had taken painkillers before we attempted this, but I just haven't felt right since that's been changed. Maybe it it was going to get sore anyway during the day. I don't know. It just doesn't feel great. So I'm going to give it, um... Another sort of, he said every two to three days change the dress and so I'll give it a full three days and then the drain site will be ready to be changed as well. Um, and see how I go. And But if it's too sore or anything like that, then I'll just have to, maybe have to go and get the nurses to do it for me. Um, hang on a minute, I need a wee bit of a drink. Um, I'm still really having problems with, uh... Oh, please. I'm still, I can do stuff with this arm. I can do the exercise. Well, I'll show you how far I can raise my arm because it's an exercise I'm meant to do. That's about it. And I need to be able to get that arm so that um, like the elbow's flat and I can't do that yet, but I just have to keep on pushing it every time, try and get a wee bit more. I just feel so like, tight and tender like really tight and tender um i just like the movement in this arm is like the the exercises they give you to do before your drain comes out are slightly different so do this do this and then put you know like your arm behind your back that's never been a problem i haven't found any of that but trying to like straighten my arm or hold it up is proven difficult and these movements, like these exercises, and that one's a bit tender, the one out to the front, they're not anything that I would class as, you know, painful. It's just moving and just the constant long nagging sort of sensation of pain that I get. Um, I've been feeling like 
Whenever I say pins and needles, it doesn't do it justice. What I mean when I say pins and needles is I keep getting these sensations in my boob, in my armpit and everything of actual pins, like actual needles, like real sharp, direct, like stabbing pains, but pinpointed all around that area. So I'm hoping that it's just maybe my nerves coming back to life. I haven't been getting it down my arm or anything. I know that if that happens, you need to get in contact with the doctor, you know, ASAP. This is just very, very localised. Um, if it does start to move, I will be contacting the doctor about it. Um, but I'm thinking that it's just maybe my body is starting to try and knit back together and mend. Because obviously they've had to cut through a muscle here. My boob. There isn't anything major there to be cut, you know what I mean? It's breasts are kind of fatty. Um, I've put, I managed yesterday for the first time to put a bra on which immediately helped the good boob because I've quite big boobs, you know what I mean? I need a bit of support. Um, It immediately helped the good boob. The bad boob feels just tender and it, I'm just being careful with the way that I'm moving because obviously the bra goes underneath my arm and it's sitting right. It, it's nearly like it was done to match, you know what I mean? So that if I was ever wearing a top, the scar could be hidden, but the scar is running right along where the strap is on the bra and I had bought bras specifically for this so they're not underwired and um, there's no heavy stitching in them they're very very like soft not lycra but lycra like material very very soft and comfortable but with enough support um just to try and get me through what else have I got to talk about I think that's all really it for the minute, just how I'm getting along. Um, Martina, my nurse, she was the one who took my drain out, was just explaining to me that the treatment plan isn't set in stone yet. They need to wait until the tumour comes back from pathology so that we know what kind of cancer it is, what actual grade it is, because it's not grade one or else it wouldn't have spread into lymph nodes. Um, the May want to like if the, I've already said this before but I'm elaborating from yesterday on what she had said about if there wasn't clear March and they may want to operate again um but she said yesterday that they may want to do chemo before they operate and I just I just don't have a clue what's going on and I'm gonna have she did say that I will have a few weeks wait um because of bank holidays and you know Christmas and New Year and all that kind of stuff so it will take a wee bit longer to come back than normal, but obviously I'll be meeting next, I think, with my oncologist. And then we'll be figuring out what's going on from there. But I'm trying not to worry too much. Like, I wanted so badly to Google, if cancer hasn't spread, can you still die from it? And I know, don't do that. Do not do that. You know, I'm just waiting... I need to wait on them just telling me um, what's going on. But I'm just, I'm concerned in case I'm not out of the woods. But again, there's just no point in sitting stressing about it. I'm not even, th I, there's no point in even thinking about it right now at all. Um. So yeah, I've decided that's another thing as well that I've decided. Um. Obviously, you guys will see this vlog on Sunday. That's whenever it goes up. But the week after the following Sunday's vlog, I will look different. I've decided to take some of my power back and I'm getting all my hair cut off. Not like skinhead. I have like a long hair. But um, if my hair is going to fall out anyway due to chemotherapy, well, then I'm going to get used to it being short first and I'm going to try something new. You know what I mean? If it's all going to fall out, I'm going to try something new with my hair for a change. So I'm going to get it cut pretty short. And um, that's happening on Tuesday morning. Um, A lovely, lovely guy that um I used to work with whenever I was a teenager. Um, I worked in a hairdresser whenever I was a teenager, whenever I was at school. And one of the hairdressers there, Andy, um, he still does my hair. 
So he was kind enough to agree to come out to the house to do it for me so that I don't have to put myself in germs way, you know, I'd like, so I don't have to put myself at any risk in case for treatments and stuff. And I don't want to get COVID, even though I've been double jabbed and all that. I'm quite vulnerable health wise at the moment. So he said he would come to the house and he would do it for me. So I'm having that done on um Tuesday morning and one of the great things about it is if I don't like myself with short hair, well, it'll not be long because it'll be falling out anyway. <laughs> you know? May as well try. Get used to it. Like, get used to having less hair so that whenever it does start to fall out, it isn't such a huge shock to my system. Um, I've already planned on um, whenever it does start to fall out. I don't want to be sitting with, you know, like, l- like lumpy hair. Like, you know clumps being bald and others but having hair so I'm just going to take the clippers to it and buzz it all down anyway but I thought why not why not have a wee change cheer yourself up and worst comes to worst and I hate it it'll fall out anyway <laughs> you know what I mean but anyway guys um in case this is the last update before um new year happy new year to everybody I hope that whatever you get up to, um, that you have a really good time and that this coming year is better to you than this last year has been. Um, for me, I will have one hell of a six months on my, on my hands. It'll be a lot of fighting, a lot of illness and a lot of bad crap happening to me. But if the prize is life at the end of it, then it'll be worth it all. And I'm taking you guys along, along on the, on the journey with me. But for you guys, I wish you nothing but the very best for New Year. I hope that if you're dealing with cancer yourself, that you can find some light moments and you can find some good in such a horrible situation. And if you're not, if you're just here because you're, you want to support, well, then you deserve the world. And I hope everyone does have a happy new year. Not too many drinks though, because you don't want to die on New Year's Day. <laughs> I shall not be. I shall be lying in bed, taking her easy. <laughs> but um, until the next one, guys, make sure, please, please, the best way that you can help me at the minute is to like, subscribe and share the channel and also click the notification bell and click it so that it gives you all notifications it helps with the algorithm and it helps push it out to people who may need to see the video. I say this on every video, but it's just so important because you never know who me sharing my experience with could help, you know. And that's the whole the whole reason I'm doing this is to help other people so that they don't feel alone. But anyway, guys, until next time, I will love you and leave you. And thank you so much for watching. <laughs>